My people, people don't they talk, say the situation for Nigeria don't pass Shege. Say you don't enter another level to Shege Banza. <laughs> people, <laughs> um, Rufai of Arise TV, you don't call out a ball I met Tunubu, say make him come apologize to good luck, Jonathan, and which I'm in support of it, honestly. I beg, when I remember during Good Luck Jonathan, when he come on subsidy, when I remember, in short, uh, this video, when I go watch plenty, make sure, make sure I just listen. Waiting at Shewa you talk, nothing where you know call Good Luck Jonathan. So they say, now nah, scam. <laughs> so now, in short, man, I just, I go let you watch the video. I beg, the likes of Tunde Bakari, Femi Kuti, that man will get grey beer beer for head, and uh, Joe, and all of them, like the way they pack themselves, go or Jota at that time, where Good Luck come on subsidy. I beg, where they they? She they don't deaf or they blind or they dumb suddenly the way they know no waiting they happen or they know or they tie their leg down chain them they know if you come out they know if you walk out again because you see the action when they carry now so what's stopping them from carrying out the same action now? <laughs> in short, eh, you make I not just talk, body they pepper me, guys. Man, I don't forget to like and follow this um video. NHTV NG, my Facebook page, NHTV Anger, my YouTube channel. Follow my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Man, I don't forget our live video later on for our um airtime giveaway just to celebrate Peter Obi. I'll go see now for the next video. Man, I may share, drop your comments. Effect of this across the um country. What's your take on the story? Okay. My comment will be in three parts. At first, the first part will be history. In the 70s, a war happened called the Yom Kippur War. And because of that, crude oil prices did rise from two or three dollars per barrel to about 11, 10, 12, 13 dollars per barrel. Nigeria decided to subsidize for its citizens then. Because prior to that time, we had a refinery out of Fotakot built by Shell Daisi. And production was a bit stretched for the people. So the government said, let's subsidize. This was even before the NNPC was to come a couple of years afterwards. In the 80s, it became a problem. In fact, I remember a This Week news, uh, magazine episode that talked about the fact that the government was thinking of pulling out petrol subsidies. But it never happened. But the time went on. We returned to democracy. This problem persists. Until Preston Goodluck Jonathan tried pulling this out in 2012. On the 11th of January 2012, President Tinubu wrote an article, or maybe it was published, in the Nation newspaper, giving his take on the subsidy issue. He famously called it a scam, while the protest you know, raged on, and he called it a Jonathan tax. Is it safe to say that this is President Tinubu's tax today? Anytime policy and politics mix, you breed catastrophe. Anytime politics and policies mix, you breed catastrophe. We ought to have pulled our subsidy in 2012. That was the best time. The economy was doing well. But because politics was mixed with a the policy, then we bred catastrophe like we had in 2012. And for all those that went out to occupy Nigeria, we are here again. Doesn't Mr. Goodluck Jonathan deserve some apology? Secondly, what's the problem on ground? We knew this was going to happen. Once the marketer started to lift, then definitely we're going to have problems because one, our forex prices has gone up, international factors, oil price, we have pre-existing wars and all of that. Then the past three effect will be for the citizens. And please quote me. I repeat, quote me, there is no way in the world that the government does not make intervention in the petrol price, energy price for the people. Ronald Reagan deregulated the petrol economy in America in 1981. Till date, the American government still makes interventions. How do they do it? They say they are releasing their strategic national reserves. Quote me, in the UK recently, Rishi Sunak had to work on some taxes as regards petrol sales. Because energy is important for the people. The third part, I would say, and that's why we have the increase in price, and we saw this coming. We had always talked about it, so I'm not surprised. The third part I will talk about this morning is solutions. So what are the solutions? At some point down the line, the government will still have to make interventions as regards energy pricing. 
you cannot continue to pass on the capitalist costing to the citizens. You're going to have a knockout ricochet effect. Inflation is going to go up. It's going to be hardship. Solutions, multiple-pronged approach. Number one, we have four working modular refineries. Incentivize those refineries. Ensure they get crude so they can produce locally. Ensure the Dangote refinery comes on board so they can augment. Let us move to local production big time. We can't keep using our forex to import. And also, if we can sell crude to these local refineries in Naira so that they can get crude so we can produce and serve our local market. Secondly, show up the agricultural sector. There's a lot of instability. Farmers are being chased around now because of terrorists and all of that. Build silos to be able to store agricultural produce to cut out the middlemen. Also, ensure that to a large extent, you fix the insecurity problems on the farm so we can have food. And please, President Tinubu, the other borders have not been opened. Please open those borders. Let food come in. Let food come in. Give farmers seeds. Give them palliatives and all of that. He has done some of that. Also, as a point I'd like to make as regards logistics, to transport petrol is a big problem. Yeah. So please, all those other moribund narrow gauge lines, we can resuscitate them to transport petrol and agri-produce. I hear there's no time. I'll yield the floor. The second thing, again, is the forex, uh, the forex regime. The Naira, as you speak now, in the I and E window, is about $800 to, uh, you know, to the dollar. Uh, yes, 800 Naira to the dollar. If it reaches 1000 to the dollar, we are in trouble, serious trouble. So this is the reality of what we face in Nigeria at this moment. And that's why, you know, uh, organized labor is saying that, look, you have to get the local refineries to work. And secondly, the committees that was originally promised to look into the issue of palliatives, organized labor through his president, Joe Ajero, is saying, where are those uh, committees? Those committees have not been set up. You are just taking decisions on top of the head of the Nigerian people and imposing more hardship on them. And that's why organized labor is saying it will pull out of the negotiations. Organized labor wants to pull out. And I said, as to uh, the reference to 2012, I've seen uh, some people putting out a video there saying, where are all those people who gathered at Toyota in 2012, January, saying that the revolution had begun at that time, the increase in fuel price was from 65 Naira to 120 Naira. Now we have had, you know, <laughs> almost double the, the matter. Everybody is quiet. So hypocrisy seems to be a major part of the Nigerian character. I'm not inciting anybody, but it is uh, instructive that those people who call themselves the conscience of the people, we, we can't see them. All. No, no, nobody is coming forward to say anything. So hypocrisy. People try on hypocrisy in this country. Those, some of those people are not dead. They are alive. And they, are, they have all remained quiet.